Ocean's 13 movie review. I actually never reviewed Ocean's 11 or Ocean's 12, so maybe I'll just say a few words about those first. Uh, if you're not familiar, and I guess these movies are a few years old by this point, uh, these were kind of all-star power movies starring, well, starring a bunch of people. Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, uh, Matt Damon, Andy Garcia, uh, and then a whole bunch of other people. Uh, the rest of the cast is rounded up by up-and-coming famous actors, people who were once famous actors and are now a bit past their prime, and relatives of famous actors. So, very impressive cast. Uh, Ocean's Eleven was a huge deal when it came out. I, I remember I was living in Japan at the time, and uh, I had friends emailing me saying, have you heard about this movie that's coming out? It's got all these famous stars in it. It's got George Clooney and Brad Pitt and Matt Damon and Julia Roberts all in the same movie. And I thought, is it possible? Can, can such a thing be done? That much star power in one movie? Surely future generations will look back and marvel at how amazing it was that there were so many stars in one movie. It, it really seemed like a big deal at the time. But since then though, I've noticed, because uh, sometimes in the video store I like to rent old movies. Uh, so, you know, uh, go into the old movie section. I've noticed that a lot of these old movies are chock full of big names, or, you know, people who were big names at the time. In fact, I could be wrong about this, but I'm getting the impression that in the golden age of Hollywood, it was even more common to cram movies full of everyone who was a big star at the time. Uh, I, I think, well, there are certainly plenty of older movies that are crammed full with names that were just as impressive back in their day. Uh, so, in that respect, maybe these ocean movies aren't quite that amazing. But, it, you know, it was something that impressed people at the time. Uh, the movies, I think kind of all three of them, Ocean's Eleven, and then the sequels Ocean's Twelve and Ocean's Thirteen, did kind of have a reputation for coasting on their star power, meaning that the writing wasn't always that great, the jokes weren't always that funny, but, you know, people would come out to kind of see all the stars. And I think that's kind of true, like these movies are kind of coasting a little bit on their star power, uh, but that's not to say that they don't have their charms. I mean, on the plus side, uh, Ocean's 13, I really like the retro feel and kind of the opening credits and the end credits and kind of the retro music throughout. Uh, you know, like these movies, of course, were inspired by the old Rat Pack movies. Uh, from the, I believe, the 60s, which I never actually saw uh, for no particular reason. I just never got around to it. But I kind of dig that retro vibe nonetheless. Uh, also in Ocean's 13, another positive. Eddie Izzard is back. He was in, I believe, the previous two movies as well, but he's got an expanded role in this. Uh, Eddie Izzard's my favorite comedian, so I just love seeing him trying to break into Hollywood. Um, he doesn't really have any funny lines in this movie. Uh, they don't really give him, they don't really give him any good lines to, or much to do, but I, I'm just happy to see him start breaking into Hollywood roles. There's a subplot in Ocean 13 about two members of the gang who, as part of the scheme, they're, they're going to go back to infl infiltrate this factory in Mexico. I believe, where the dice is produced and kind of tamper with the dice directly at the source as part of like the, the scheme. Uh, and then they end up becoming involved in leading the strike against the horrible working conditions in the factory. I actually thought that was really funny. Um, but then, after I kind of laughed at it for a while, I thought to myself, well, here I am in a nice, cool apartment, in a comfortable chair, uh, watching this on TV, you know, kind of all the luxuries of a first world country, laughing 
uh, about how poor the working conditions are in Mexico. I mean, not at that directly, We're laughing at the storyline related to that. But, but you know, uh, once that kind of dawned on me, then I felt a little bit guilty for having laughed at it. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's, that storyline shouldn't have been played for laughs, or I don't know. At the very least, I feel very guilty for kind of being so comfortable in my little apartment while I was laughing at it. But uh, what can I say? Just more ineffective liberal guilt. Um, aside from that, I like seeing these big stars on screen as much as everybody else does. Uh, the movie is kind of a little bit over-reliant on star power, but there were some genuinely funny moments mixed in. Uh, I always liked seeing, uh, you, you know, the other thing about these movies is it's fun kind of seeing how the scheme comes together, which is the whole thing with these, these kind of caper movies. Uh, the plot about ripping off a casino is obviously recycled again from the first movie, but I don't know, I guess they ran out of ideas. There's only so many elaborate schemes you can do. Um, but the other complaint kind of about this scheme is I thought they were cheating a little bit by using seduction. Uh, you, you know, like they, they've got, um, instead of having this elaborate role play or an elaborate scheme or this elaborate plan, uh, at a couple different points during the ruse, uh, they, they just get kind of, um, you, use sex appeal to kind of get what they want. And I thought, oh, that's not an elaborate plan, that's just using sex appeal to get what you want. Um, and they actually did it twice, but I guess to be fair, they swapped the genders. So I think the first time it was a, it was a man uh, seducing like this powerful businesswoman, uh, and then the second time they use a business they use a woman to seduce the daredevil stuntman. So at, at least, and I'm sorry, I mean seduce in the sense of like distract, uh, not actually kind of sleeping with them, but. Uh, using sex appeal to just kind of distract them and get what you want. Um, but at the very least, by kind of reversing the genders, they've kind of covered themselves from charges of sexism, right? Because otherwise you can say, oh, how typical. They're showing that powerful businesswomen are just irresponsible and, and uh, will be swayed by a good-looking man. Um, but by having it pulled both on the man and the woman, I guess they've kind of covered themselves from that charge. El Pacino's in this movie, and I thought he did a good job. Uh, in his later years, I think he's been guilty in some movies of overacting, and guilty in other movies of just kind of coasting along on, on his name recognition. But in this movie, I thought he, he hit it just right. He didn't overact, he didn't underact, it, it was just a good performance. And yeah, the, that's all, all my thoughts on this movie. So overall, yeah, overall I'd recommend it. it it's worth watching. It's not great, but it's good. <laughs>